In this video, let us try to understand the Fourier transform of a rectangular pulse. Uh, the rectangular pulse uh, is encountered in various situations in engineering, uh, especially in signals and systems when you're dealing with the signals and uh, also when dealing with the specific types of systems called filters. And uh, let us try to understand today uh, what the Fourier transform of a rectangular pulse looks like without actually uh, computing the Fourier transform. So we are not going to discuss how the Fourier transform for the rectangular pulse is going to be computed, but we'll just try to understand uh, what the uh, Fourier transform looks like and uh, what, uh, what changes can we see or observe in the Fourier transform if we alter the width of the rectangular pulse. So uh, a few things to uh, notice here is that uh, this particular rectangular pulse that we have here is having a certain width which is tau. So the width of the pulse is uh, tau. So it, it, it extends uh, to the left by minus tau by 2 and to the right by uh, plus tau by 2. So the total width of this pulse is tau and the height of this pulse is a. So it has an amplitude value of a. So uh, the energy of this pulse is nothing but the area under this uh, pulse. So that constitutes the uh, area of uh, this pulse, which is nothing but the energy of this pulse. So if we have to write about the energy uh, for this particular pulse, uh, which is the area under the pulse, which is the area of this rectangle, so the rectangle has a width of tau and a height of a. So the area is simply going to be a tau. So what we are going to do now is uh, for this particular pulse, which has a fixed energy a tau, uh, what does this uh, Fourier transform or spectrum look like? So the Fourier transform is also called as the spectrum. And uh, we want to understand what the spectrum looks like and then we will try to analyze how the spectrum will change uh, if we alter the width of the pulse while keeping its energy uh, to be the same. Okay, we'll keep the energy as constant while altering the width of the pulse. So what you notice first of all is that the Fourier transform of the rectangular pulse is a sinc function uh, which looks as such as in this figure. And uh, the sync function has a peak value at uh, a frequency value of zero. And that uh, peak value is uh, equal to the energy of the pulse, which is a tau. So the peak value is a tau, uh, which is equal to the energy of the pulse. And that occurs exactly at the uh, frequency value of zero. And then we notice that the spectrum has uh, zero crossings at uh, integer multiples of 1 by tau. So we have a zero crossing of this uh, sync function at 1 by tau, 2 by tau, 3 by tau, 4 by tau, and so on. Similarly at minus 1 by tau, minus 2 by tau, and so on. So the uh, spectrum of the rectangular pulse has zero crossings at uh, integer multiples of 1 by tau. So now having this information that the spectrum of uh, a rectangular pulse is a sync function which looks as such, uh, we want to investigate what, uh, what changes will happen to this spectrum when we alter the width of the pulse uh, while keeping the energy constant. So if we reduce the width of the pulse while keeping the energy constant, it means that the height of the pulse will have to be proportionately increased. So the energy is always constant A into tau, height into the width. And if we reduce the width by a certain factor, the corresponding height of the pulse has to be increased by the same factor to keep this energy value as a constant. So let us see what happens if we uh, reduce the uh, width of the pulse. So straight away what you can see is, since we are going to maintain the energy constant, the peak value a tau will remain constant. So as tau decreases, a will increase. So a into tau, the product or the energy of this pulse will remain constant. But as tau decreases, what will happen is these values one by tau, two by tau and so on, 
these uh, will become larger and larger. So as we make tau smaller, one by tau will become bigger. So that means the, the zero crossings will spread apart. They'll become far apart from each other. So that means the first zero crossing, which is at one by tau, which will go outside, further outside. That means the width of this main lobe of the sink function will become wider as we decrease the width of the pulse. So what we see here is that the width of the pulse has now been made smaller. Proportionately, the height of the pulse is increased so as to keep the energy of the pulse to be the same. So as tau uh, is made smaller, is made smaller, the height of the pulse A, A is made larger so as tau decreases uh, the height a must increase in order to keep the energy constant so the energy is nothing but the area under the pulse so energy still remains as a tau so that peak value of a tau occurs at a frequency value or equal to zero and the zero crossings will occur at integer multiples of 1 over tau. So that's 1 over tau, 2 over tau, and so on. And this will be minus 1 over tau, and so on. So since we are uh, reducing the value of tau, that is, since we are decreasing the width of the pulse, the 1 by tau value will go up. That means uh, the width of the main lobe of the sink function is getting wider in this case so what we notice is that as we make the rectangular pulse width narrower and narrower the width of its spectrum's uh, main lobe will become wider and wider so one by tau increases as tau decreases and as we continue to lower the width of the pulse even further so again here we have the value of tau decreasing further and energy maintained as constant so the energy is still a tau so what happens is as we said before as tau decreases the the amplitude a must increase so the the peak value of the spectrum occurs at a frequency value of zero which is equal to the energy now so a tau occurs uh, a into tau is the energy value which is the peak value of the sink function which occurs at f equal to zero and uh, since we have uh, lowered the value of tau one by tau becomes larger so what we notice is the width of the main lobe of the sink function has become even bigger and this trend will continue until uh, as we as you can keep reducing the value of the width of the pulse so what we will see is that as uh, the value of the pulse width tau approaches zero the amplitude a will have to approach infinity so as to maintain the energy value to be the same value uh, as a tau so the area under this uh, pulse as tau uh, tends to zero uh, remains the same that is equal to a tau so as tau approaches zero the width of the pulse is now approaching zero then the corresponding uh, amplitude is approaching infinity so that the area under this pulse will remain the same. That means the energy is a tau. Now, since the value of tau has become, or it's approaching zero, the zero crossings of the main lobe of the sink function will occur at infinity because the first zero crossing occurs at uh, one by tau and uh, as tau approaches zero one upon tau will approach infinity so the first zero crossing of the main lobe of the sink function is going to happen at a value of frequency uh, equal to infinity so one by tau approaches to infinity so that corresponds to uh, the 
Fourier transform of this pulse, which has a width approaching zero, uh, to be a constant value of a tau. So the peak value occurs at a frequency of zero, which is a tau, and it it remains the same because it is going to meet the frequency axis at infinity. So parallel lines meet at infinity. So the first meeting will happen at infinity. So what we notice is as we uh, decrease the width of the rectangular pulse, uh, the width of the uh, spectrum's main lobe, which is the, uh, the, the main lobe of the sink function becomes wider and wider. And uh, until we have uh, the width approaching zero, that means the width of the main lobe approaches infinity. So what we see is that uh, this is a limiting case for the rectangular pulse where the width approaches zero, and that gives us what is called as the uh, impulse function or delta function. So this is our impulse function. And uh, what we notice is the Fourier transform or spectrum of the impulse function is a constant and that constant value is equal to the energy of the impulse which is a tau so in this video we have seen what uh, you know we have seen what is the spectrum of the rectangular pulse of a certain width uh, while keeping its energy to be constant and uh, what we notice is that uh, as we make the pulse width narrower and narrower the, its spectrum becomes wider and wider. That means its bandwidth is going to keep growing. And that is uh, uh, a fact that time and frequency domains have an inverse relationship. Anything that is compressed in time, it will expand in the frequency domain and vice versa. So uh, we will encounter such uh, things in a, a variety of applications. And uh, in particular, if you understand how the rectangular pulse is related to its uh, spectrum in the frequency domain, uh, it will help us analyze a lot of things better. And uh, we may have the rectangular pulse shape in the time domain and correspondingly in the frequency domain, we get the sync function or equivalently, we may have the rectangular pulse shape in the frequency domain, uh, which will give the time domain equivalent as a sync function. So uh, the, uh, the Fourier transform pair it has a, a, a relationship where if we have something in the time domain, we get a certain thing in the frequency domain. And if we reverse that, the reverse is also true. So uh, the Fourier transform of a rectangular pulse is a sink and the Fourier transform of a sink is going to be a rectangular pulse shape. So uh, we will encounter uh, a rectangular pulse shape in the frequency domain in when we talk about filters. And that is something we will discuss at some point later. So in this video, we have seen how the uh, rectangular pulse is related to a spectrum and how the width of the pulse uh, affects the spectrum. And that leads us to a limiting case where when we make the width of the pulse to be equal to zero, now we get the impulse function or delta function, uh, which has a constant value for its uh, Fourier transform or spectrum.